Hey folks, welcome to Solar Punk Station, where we're building regenerative night times. I'm Navar, and tonight we're going to talk about lunar punk. Lunar punks are the night dwellers of our solar punk futures. Biomimicry of bioluminescent creatures, moth-themed cloaks, and gossamer fabrics fluttering in the night breeze are some of the aesthetic influences here. Winter would be the lunar punk's time to be more active hosting events in the crisp nights from art exhibits to street fairs. Lunar Punk focuses more on the night than Solar Punk's sunny disposition. Because of this, Lunar Punk aesthetics are heavy in purples and blacks as opposed to the greens and yellows of Solar Punk. Bioluminescent creatures provide inspiration for clothes that glow, either under black light or as a result of smart textiles. Lunar Punks love their fellow creatures of the night, moths, mushrooms, and bats. Where the punk really comes in is that in a lunar punk society, people feel safe going out at night. Social safety nets mean that people don't have to resort to crime to get by, rape culture has been excised from the cultural consciousness, and sex work is demarginalized, voluntary, and safe. Police, Prisons and punitive justice have given way to restorative justice in a world where anyone, regardless of sex, gender, or sexual orientation, can feel safe walking down the street at night. Biotechnology will have a big role to play in our solar punk future, but I especially associate lunar punk with biotech. I think this is probably because of the aesthetic associations with mushrooms and bioluminescence. Bioluminescent trees or algae lamps can provide electricity-free path lighting in the cities of the future, and amazing different materials are being created from mushrooms like leather, wood, paper, or even structural building materials. Hempcrete and coral-inspired biomimetic concrete are being investigated to replace the carbon-intensive traditional concrete we currently use for so much infrastructure. Maybe it's all the purple hues or the influence of the moon, but Lunar Punk feels more magical than Solar Punk to me. As Solar Punk is a movement that accepts both the spiritual and the scientific, this distinction is probably due more to my own cultural biases of magic being dark and mysterious than it is to any preference for Solar Punks or Lunar Punks to practice magic or not. The Solar Punk Druid and Justine Norton Kurtzen have said something similar though, so it seems I'm not alone. While not a large percentage of the population yet, the growing number of pagans in the world will find a home in the lunar punk future. Space has also become tied to lunar punk expressions of a hopeful future. One series that I'll talk more about in a future episode that embodies this is the Earthseed Duology by Octavia Butler. While the events of that book are terrestrial in nature, the main character is driven to help humanity reach the stars while not neglecting the planet we call home. Lunar Punk offers an alternative to the current thrust of private corporate space exploration, making space travel only for the rich and powerful to escape the planet they've ruined by ignoring the toll their activities exact from the natural world. If you want more Lunar Punk, there are two upcoming projects worth checking out. Solar Punk Magazine is going to have a Lunar Punk issue coming out later this year. And Android Press is accepting submissions until April 30th, 2022 for Bioluminescent, a Lunar Punk Anthology, which is expected to come out in 2023. Solar Punk Magazine may be tentatively accepting more Lunar Punk work for their magazine in May, depending on if they have enough submissions at that point. If you know of any other upcoming or existing lunar punk projects that are worth checking out please let everybody know down in the comments it's always good to have some input from everybody and i hope you all have a great night